in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. And uh, what is the camera? Welcome, man of God. Thank you. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation again today. We're so grateful that you're able to connect tonight. So thankful to God for your life. And um, we are ready and available to hear what God has through you tonight. And we welcome everybody that is connected through Facebook. The Lord bless you for joining us tonight. And I thank you so much, stay tuned for tonight's meeting. I wanna ask that we, we stay on mute until we for us to pray that we can all unmute ourselves and just join into the prayer so as to minimize noise. But if you are in a place where you don't have children running around, feel free to stay on mute. If you have uh, any risk of background noise, please, uh, I recommend that we stay, uh, those in the Zoom room stay muted so that we can all benefit from tonight's meeting. Without much to say, uh, welcome. Prophet Chris, it's all yours. Take it away. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. It's, uh, it's always a privilege and an honor to, to be given the opportunity to bring God's word. Thank you so much. And I know for sure that God predestined this particular meeting. And it's my prayer and my heart desire that at the end of this particular session, Everyone shall have a testimony, and the name of the Lord will be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to uh, we are going to have uh, like a, a double session today, mm. where we are going to be praying. But before we pray, we are going to establish some facts. And one of the things that the Lord had ministered to me to bring to the table today and share with the Canada Ventures men is how to deal with principalities. So I'm sharing mm. with you on dealing with principalities. Mm. Dealing with principalities. Dealing with principalities. Most, or, or let me say majority of God's children, they have the ability to cast out devils, they have the ability to pray. But when it comes to principalities, they don't know how to handle principalities. And you must understand that there's a difference between demons and principalities. There's a huge difference. What is the difference? With demons, you cast them out. But with principalities, you wrestle. With principalities, you fight. And this is why so many people have not yet seen their testimonies. Because they don't know how to deal with the principality that is standing as a hindrance to that testimony. So we are going to move briefly at uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Ephesians 6 and verse 12. Please, I would like somebody to read for me. Uh, from Ephesians 6, 12 to 18. But to save time, we are just going to read verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Ephesians 6 verse 12. Yes. Okay. Uh, verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Praise the Lord. Now, you discover a huge difference here. When Jesus was giving the commission to the 72 to say, go out and cast out devils, they all came back rejoicing because they dealt with demons and not principalities. And now these same apostles that are casting out demons, they now made a particular one that they were not able because that one was not just a demon but a principality. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, he said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So if your problem is a principality problem, it is not casting that will solve the problem, it is wrestling. And you cannot take over a territory without dealing with the principality that governs that territory. That's why the word principality comes from Greece. 
So there are there are regions in the realm of this that are governed by forces. And you cannot have dominion over those areas until you wrestle the principality that is controlling that particular area. This is why so many people are still yet to see their blessing because they don't know why the blessing is not yet coming. It is because there is a principality that has not yet been handled. There is a fault that has not yet been handled. And until you learn how to wrestle, until you learn how to fight with, against that principality, it will be difficult for you to see the glory of God. The Bible speaking in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13. In Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13. The Bible said Daniel was waiting upon the Lord. Because Daniel had understood by the prophecies of Jeremiah that the time for captivity was over. And so Daniel began to fast and pray. And in Daniel chapter 10 verse 13, the Bible says the angel that was sent to release the answer to Daniel was resisted by the prince of Persia, the principality of that territory had the ability to kidnap an angel. Gabriel was kidnapped. Daniel is waiting for answers. But Daniel had not yet dealt with the principality. And so the angel of information that was supposed to bring him the information about his answer faced resistance until Daniel began to wrestle for 20 and one days. And then the Bible says Michael was released. Michael was released to come and fight the principality so that the answer of Daniel can come to you. No matter how anointed you are, if you are only praying for your marriage and you have not yet dealt with the principality that is trying to take authority over that area, you will keep cutting branches. You will keep solving problems and other problems will become because we will be dealing with the demons that are all that principality and more demons will be coming. Any area of your life, you must learn how to wrestle. You must learn how to fight. You can be a mountain like David. Someone a mountain David as the next king of Israel. But David was a king without the throne. Because David had not yet conquered the principality. This is why the day that David fought Goliath, Goliath became a principality that resisted the children of Israel, challenged their God. Why? Because Goliath wanted to have dominance over that particular territory and wanted the people to become the slaves of the Philistines. But David said, I will fight, I will wrestle. I will fight these uncircumcised Christians. The moment David defeated that principality, the announcement of his teaching started. The David that nobody knew, even though he was anointed, yet nobody celebrated, even his own brethren. That very day that he defeated the principality, news was everywhere that David had killed 10,000 and Saul had killed 1,000. For you to have access to your throne, for you to have access to your destiny, you must learn how to wrestle with the principality. You must learn how to destroy the forces that are controlling that particular area. Remember, this is not just casting of devils. Principalities are not afraid of who you are. Principalities will even challenge you the Bible is talking of the sons of Moscow. He says they went about casting devils in the name of Jesus when Paul preached. And they came across a particular one. And that force had the effort to, to make sure the name of Jesus without being afraid. He said, Jesus, I know this is a principality. Not being afraid of the name Jesus. Yeah. He's even mentioning the name and saying, look, Jesus that you are preaching me, I know Jesus. Paul, I know. But you, who are you? Now, if you go to confront a force 
in the name of Jesus, in the consciousness, that every knee shall bow. And then the force is the one telling you, I know Jesus. Automatically, you are defeated. Because principalities are not afraid of you. Principalities are afraid of the revelation that you have. They are afraid of the knowledge that you have. There are so many people that are still under the bondage of the principalities of their family. This is why they cannot rise. They are praying for a meeting, but they don't know that they have to wrestle with that principality that stopped others that came before them. They have to wrestle, and until you wrestle with it, listen, if God knows that there is no warfare, he will not give us weapons. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not canon, but they are mighty to God, to the pulling down of strongholds. You must learn how to confront the principalities of your life. You cannot take over any territory if you don't bind the strong man that controls that particular territory. That's what the Bible says in Mark chapter 3, verse 27. In Mark 3, 27, the Bible says you cannot enter a strong man's house and take out anything without, first of all, binding the strong man. Principalities won't attack you until you have reached a level of territorial dominance. They won't show demons to be attacking you, but the moment a principality comes for you is because they are saying that this one wants to take over this particular territory. This is why it's not every family member that is going through spiritual battles. Some are not going through battles because they don't carry anything that intimidates Satan. Mm. They don't have anything that intimidates the devil. So the devil is not interested in them, but rather the principality of that family will focus on the one carrying the light. We focus on the one carrying the mandate and the mantle to bring that family out of bondage. Those are the ones they will attack. Aye. The principalities will only come for you when they know that this is the one that wants to take over our territory. This is the one that wants to dominate. That's why the Bible says something in Luke chapter 11 from the straight one. The Bible says, A strong man keeps his palace. He keeps his good in Luke 11 21 and 22. But he said, When a stronger than him shall come, when the stronger power, when the stronger force that that strong man shall come, he shall seize all the goods. If you have not dealt with the principality, you see, with principalities you must wrestle. You don't run away from it. There are people who are like, you know, I'm tired of praying. The same problem keep coming. It's because you're facing demons. You are facing demons. You have to take your attention of those little forces and face the principality when you defeat their master, the genuine ones automatically surrender. But as long as you keep defeating the, the, the genuine ones, the master will keep sending different ones. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. We wrestle, for we fight. This is what Paul said to Timothy. He said, wrestle with every prophecy that has been given over your life. Why? Because for every prophecy, there is a principality that stands as a resistance to resist that which God has said. If Daniel had given up on prayer, by now, Gabriel will still be in captivity. Remember, Gabriel is an angel. Gabriel is an angel. The same Gabriel that brought news to Mary, the same Gabriel that visited Elizabeth, Gabriel was kidnapped by the prince of Persia to tell me the influence of principalities and how powerful principalities are when you are ignorant, when you don't know your identity in Christ and you don't know how to fight them. They will think of that ignorance and become strongholds and become strong and dominant. But Daniel knew that God cannot lie. 
Even though he had not seen the answer, the first day he prayed, the Bible says Daniel continued to pray until he received a stronger force. Gabriel was resistant because man, Gabriel is not the angel of war. Gabriel is a minister of influence and make a you don't expect a journalist to go and fight war. It is a minister of defense and the minister of security that will definitely defend their territory. This is why uh, Michael was said, you can't take over missions if you have not conquered the local principality, the principality of their locality, of their community, of their family, you, of your village, of your mission. You can't break through missions without dealing with the principality, with the prince of darkness of that particular area. You can't make influence and impact, even in ministry as a man of God. Now, something happened in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32, where Paul entered the city of Ephesus. There was darkness everywhere, and the people worshipped a strange God. He could see inscriptions everywhere to the unknown God, and it was impossible for miracles to happen in that city. Why? Because the principality of Ephesus resisted the miracles. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, text 2, Paul wrestled with the beast of Ephesus. Paul fought with the beast of Ephesus. He wrestled with the principality of Ephesus. And the dead began to come back to life. Miracles began to happen. Why? Because he wrestled. Some people carry the glory of God. They carry giftings. They carry prophecies. But they are not seeing results because they are waiting that someday results will come. Someday things will change. Someday God will answer. No, you don't wait that someday things will change. You are the one to be what God has said from the spiritual to the, to the physical. Because see, God says yes in the spirit. And there is no man to say yes in the physical. That yes will remain in the spirit. Because it is man that have the ability to govern mm. in the physical way. Mm. And so there are people who are wondering, did God lie? Why has the word of the Lord not come to pass? When God says yes, that yes is spiritual because God is spirit and they that worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. But the earth realm has been given over to man. Man has dominion over the terrestrial realm. So until you agree with, with that yes, until you bring the yes from the spiritual to the physical, that great yes will never manifest. It will never manifest. It will remain in the spirit until there will be one that has the ability to navigate in the spiritual realm. And implement. That's why the Bible says, God spoke a word, but great were those that implemented that word, that brought it forth, that made it to manifestation. One of the principalities you must learn how to deal with is the principality of the family. The principality of the family. There are people who are watching. Some people in their own family, they will be the one asking you, since you started praying, what has changed? They, they are not praying. They are not even going to church the way they are going. But their lives are moving strong. But you that is praying, you are the one that you don't have anything to show for because the principality is not focusing on them because they have nothing to do that can defend the principality. The devil knows he can strip everything they have in one second, but the force will focus on you. Who is the light there? It will focus on you, the one that carries that mantle. And so believers must learn how to fight. We must learn how to fight. There are so many people God promised them things. God can even Tell me missions are waiting for you and to die with as a local champion, not because God lied, but because you did not have the ability to control principalities. Let us look at something in, in Acts chapter 13, Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 and verse 6. Acts chapter 13 and verse 6 to 9. 
Acts 13 verse the, the Bible speaks about yes the, the Bible speaks about the man compared Jesus while Paul was preaching this man okay please maybe someone is reading for me let yeah. me just read one verse verse 6 only verse, verse 6 to 9 Okay, now when they had gone through the island of uh, Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Sergius Palos, an intelligent man. This man called for, ba for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, which stood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, Oh, fool of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed. When he, saw, when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, this is Paul teaching. But yet, this man that presented himself as a prophet, even carrying the name of Jesus, his assignment was to make sure that the proconsul, that is the, the upper class, don't hear that message. He doesn't have a problem if local people are following Paul. But as long as people of authority will hear what Paul has to say, he became that principality. And make sure that these people don't submit. This is why you see somebody who's anointed, but yet nobody important. The only people follow him are people he can help. But the people that are supposed to help them, nobody follows. Because there's a principality whose assignment is to make sure that people that matter, people that really matter, don't submit to your vision. Mm. So it is possible that you can have the ability to help people, but there is a principality that brings an embargo where the people who are supposed to help you don't hear you, they don't listen yeah. to you. But the people that you are supposed to help, they will listen to you because that is a liability. But the people who are supposed to be an asset to you, they have no, as even if they hear you, they won't understand. So you will submit business proposals, but yet you will find out I have everything planned out. Why is it not working? You can advise other people that they will take their advice and it will work because there is a principality who is standing in the middle, knowing fully well that if these people, if the problem social be upon, they will sit and submit to Jesus. Mm. But he did not come as an enemy. He came as a prophet. Before Paul, before light appears, darkness pretended to be light. Before Paul came, the people looked up to him as a prophet. This is why we will see in some territories a man of God, for example, that is preaching the genuine gospel. Nobody is following him. But yet, people who are doing gimmicks, everybody is following that person. Now, that man of God must deal with that principality because until you deal with that principality, no matter you are anointed, people will not come. Not because God did not send them, but because you don't have the ability to wrestle with that territorial force so that the people can listen to you. The moment God wrestled with this man, the Bible says the problems will be lead. He now listened to Paul. Listen to the way Paul addressed him. He said, You are the son of a devil. This is why when we become radical with some prayers, some people will be like, No, how can you pray such dangerous prayers? The day you meet Goliath, come to him and pray for long life and long life and prosperity. As long as 
sunlight there is no truth in it. As long as he's in the existence. So there are people who are not married today because there is a principality whose only assignment is to make sure that that marriage never comes. Any other person can get married, but this particular principality knows that if this woman is married today, the way she serves God changed. She won't be under the bondage of fornication anymore. There are things that she will no longer do. She will focus on a new direction. So that principality makes sure that that marriage never comes. And even when the woman marries, if they can't get her, the principality will possess the husband. And the husband will be an obstacle to the vision and the move of what God intended to do. Why? Because he is of a weak spirit and the principality takes advantage of that. If you fight the husband, you won't win because you are fighting the flesh. But if you wrestle the principality that is behind that attack, the man will submit to the Holy Spirit. Hi, your brother. Before you enter any territory, whatever business you want to do, know that there are forces that control that business. In life, there's nothing like God. He said that you are under darkness or you are under light. So before you start any business, you must wrestle with the force, the principality that has put others down in that particular field. Okay. Before I came to the Victoria Guinea, when the Lord had told me that I'm leaving Cameroon and I'm going to the Victoria Guinea to pray, but where am I going? And I was kind of confused, like, I'm really hearing God because I love crap so much. I'm seeing Cameroon to be too small for me. And God is sending me to a mission of one million two hundred people. So I had to pray to be sure that this is the voice of God. And the moment God confirmed, I had to start confronting the principality of the land before I enter the land. So for three months, I was dealing with the principality of the air, the land, and the sea of eternity. Where at times some of them will appear in my room. I said, before I enter, I must deal with this first. If not, there will be no impact. What has put on that stand will put me down. So the moment I sat on the plane, and I'm on my way to the toilet genie, when I know that this is now the air space of genie, I started addressing the powers of the air. I said, look, I am in the air now, all of us are in the air, physically, but in the realm of the spirit, I am seated far above principalities and powers. I am seated together with Christ. So I'm announcing to the principality of the air that the one that is coming to give me is not the one who can bring down. It's not the one that will end on others because I identify you and know you. So I'm dealing with you in the air. Just make sure I don't lie. If you are powerful enough, then make sure I don't lie. Because the moment I land, the battle of the air is over. I took over the battle of the land. So the moment I landed at the airport, the first thing I did was I removed my shoes. I said, look, the oracle of God has landed. And any mission I touch, I possess. I said, the strong man was existing because the stronger man had not yet come. So I buy the force of the land and I take what belongs to God in this land and I take possession of what God has said. And I put oil at the airport. I said, I may be small, but the God in me is not small. So anyone in this land that has been dominating before I came, I want to announce that the one that has come is not a small man. It's the one that has dealt with the principalities. So demons have no choice. So the moment I entered the land, the next day I went to the ocean. And I carried oil because it's an island surrounded by the ocean. And I carried oil to the ocean. I said, look, let every marine force hear me. I <laughs> came for an introduction that you may know that Chris Benno is already in town. So every marine power, you have no choice than to submit to a higher authority. So don't cross my path. And anyone under your bondage, I came to tell you, a stronger force has come. You put others down, but the one that will teach you that was come. There was thunder the whole land that very day. Massive storm and thunder. The whole land. This is why, within a short period of time, the result I have here pastors for 18 years they have been out because they are casting devils every day because they have not dealt with the principalities. They have not 
wrestle with that force. He said, I am of God too short that we cannot deliver. Why you start battling with this? It's all because there is a force behind it, and you are waiting for God to act. But God is saying, You are my battle ass. You are my battle ass. I have given you dominion. But so, how do we wrestle with principalities? We need weapons. What are the weapons that we need? We are going back to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at the weapons. We don't just fight principalities with that weapon. Lay calm for the so flattered. Today, I decree and declare every principality that has resisted your answers, that has been standing as an obstacle to your blessing, to your job, to your business, to your ministry, to your marriage. Everyone who has been given from my voice, I make a prophetic utterance and a prophetic decree that today that principality shall be dethroned in the name of Jesus. Amen. I Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Yes. Thank you, Father. So we are looking at the weapons. Hmm. What are the weapons that we use? Ephesians 6 from the store. Verse 12. Okay. For we do not wrestle yes. against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to That's stand right. in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now, listen. Okay, we let's go gradually. Okay. There is an assurance that the evil day will surely come and you will do everything that you have done to stand. But if we look as if we are not seeing results, the day that battle comes, the day that some things pop up, you will wonder why you are fasting and your prayer and all the things you have done seem to have not yielded any result. But you must hold up to the armor of God. You must take the armor of God. Now, let's go verse, the verse 14. These are the weapons. Read verse 14 now. Stand therefore, having girded your waist, with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Oh, we we'll go gradually. Okay. We we'll, we'll go gradually. Verse 14. Having gathered your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You can't fight. Principalities. You can't wrestle principalities if there is no truth in you. Mm. Because if you are light, there is nothing that is hidden in light. The moment that light turns on, everything shows, every hidden thing shows. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 10 26 that everything that is hidden shall be revealed. Mm. And this truth is not just truth as in speaking the truth. This truth is a personality. I am the truth. I am the way and I am the light. Hi. You must have knowledge of who Jesus is. Mm. You must have the consciousness. What is the, the work of a belt? Is to make sure that you are trans as a form so that you are naked not exposed. So it is the belt that we saw that the nakedness is not exposed. It is Jesus. The revelation of what Christ has done. The revelation of what Christ has done. The revelation of who Jesus is is what we defend you. It's what we hide to say. When you know I am not going by my ability, but there is a truth I know that that truth has become my belt. Hmm. So you show up and the devil tries to show you your past. And then you stand with the belt of truth. You can't see my nakedness because I carry a truth around me. Mm. 
You can't condemn my past because there is a belt that covers my weaknesses. There is a price, there is a sacrifice that has been offered to my behalf that has not condemned me, that have hidden my weakness, that have made up for my wickedness, that have made up for my failure, for my sin. So I stand with the belt of truth. My wickedness can't be exposed because I'm coming against this principality with the revelation of who Jesus is. So it is no longer the ability of Christian, but the reality of what Jesus so he has become my belt of truth. He has become my belt. So he said, having the breastplate of righteousness, that is what protects your chest. That is what protects your heart. A breastplate, the responsibility is to protect your chest from being hung. And the most important part of your chest is your heart, the breastplate of righteousness. You must have this knowledge that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because you cannot confront the devil with your works of righteousness. You can't stand before principalities with your works of righteousness. Mm. Because even your works of righteousness are like filthy rights before God. But you stand with the righteousness of Christ. You stand with what God has done. It becomes a sheep. It becomes your breastplate. It is settled in your heart. So it protects your heart. So I am no longer condemned. There is no condemnation today that I'm in Christ Jesus. So Christian is not condemned. That is my breastplate of righteousness. So I am coming against this force because I know there is no condemnation today that I Christ. So why should my marriage, why should my ministry suffer this disaster? When I am not condemned, my heart is covered with a breastplate of righteousness. So you can't tell me it is my sin. Because if it is my sin, then the sacrifice of Jesus was in vain. Okay. Okay. The coffin is so flattered. There are people, for example, they will start the fasting and then they don't finish the fasting. And then they go to the place of prayer and the devil begin to whisper to them. Maybe the reason things are going is because you never finish the fast. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell because my strength shall no man prevail. It is not of him that brought it, of him that will it, but it is of God that showeth mercy. And it is not by power, it is not by might, it is by the Spirit of the Lord. So if you are sin resolved because you fasted, it means your fasting is what has guaranteed. So there's no way God can take glory. There's no way the sacrifice of Jesus can walk into that situation because you are depending on your works of righteousness. And remember, if you fail one of the law, you have you have fallen on the law that is you have you have violated the entire law. So there's no way you can stand before your way justifying the works of righteousness. You stand. With imputed righteousness. So when I'm dealing with principalities, my past is not your business. My mistakes are not your business. My weaknesses are not your business. Because it's not just me. I'm not coming in the name of Chris Benny. I'm coming in the name of God that I thought you already took the keys from you and gave the keys to me. So I'm just coming to tell you, leave my territory because the original owner of the territory has landed. The one that thought you defeated you and gave me a letter to show you to, to evacuate this premises and you cannot resist it because it's coming from the higher truth. Jesus. Without this, the devil will blackmail you out of your presence. So you go to the place of prayer with boldness and you end up, oh Father, have mercy. You are going for warfare, but because of spiritual ignorance, the warfare did not take place. Because at the moment you began to pray, what the image that played on your face was that. 
So the confidence that you went with disappears. The boldness you went with disappears because you are, you are being blackmailed by the voice of the accuser. And because you don't know how to discern, you don't know you are right in Christ. You now turn and you are asking God, okay, Father, I am a sinner. I am a dead sinner. Have mercy. You are a dead sinner. Who told you that? Even when Adam failed, God still visited him. God still came to talk to him. It was Adam that said, I'm naked. And God said, who told you? Who told you that you are naked? The problem was not even the sin that removed them from the garden. The problem was they will now have access to the tree of life. And if they will eat it, they will never die. Because God is the Alpha and the Omega. Before he set the garden and put the man inside, he knew that man before. Ah. So don't go confronting the enemy depending on your righteousness or telling him I fasted for 40 days. I fasted for 100 days. This is why I'm standing. There are people that have fasted more than you that don't have access to what you have. It is the grace of God. It is it's the mercy of God. Verse 15. Please read verse 15 for me. Is somebody being blessed here? Yes, Lord. Is somebody being blessed? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Big time. Verse 15. And having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Listen. The Bible says... Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Those who make peace, they are already blessed. Already blessed. They are already declared blessed. Let me show you something. Matthew chapter 5. The prophet needs a father. Thank you, Father. And the Bene Coparus, Ilana, Sophia, Sophia, Tivata. All right. Matthew chapter 5 is 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall have the ability, they shall receive the power to become sons in the place of the spirit. The peacemakers are known as sons. Sons not in terms of gender, in terms of spiritual responsibility. For there are things that cannot be given to a child until that child has come of age to be called a son. So he said, You must have your feet. It must be, your feet must be shown with the gospel that comes from this. This is why anytime a blessing wants to come into your life, the devil's tears of anger. The moment you are getting Easily is the spiritual season where the principality knows that you are about to enter into a new realm. So anger comes to nowhere. And when anger comes, you can't pray. When anger comes, bitterness will follow, malice will follow, unforgiveness will follow, and depression will follow. This is why, as a spiritual person, you must understand that will make you not to fly as an eagle. Because even in the airport, they will be the same thing in the realms of the spirit. No matter your covering, no matter your authority, no matter your anointing, no matter your revelation, as long as anger is in your heart, as long as anger is controlling you, you can't mount up with it because you don't have the ability. That time you are not manifesting as a son. Remember what the Bible says in the book of John? He said, they that believe, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. So there is a power that makes you become. There is a power that gives you the ability to become. And that power is peace. That power is when you hurt me. I know that this hurt, there is a principle 
to control you, to say these words to me. So I can carry offense. And when I carry offense, I begin to help me to fly. So for the interest of my destiny, I was addressed the principle. Why is he using you and not? So your anger doesn't mean anything to me, mean anything to me, because I am focused on fighting. I am focused on dealing with principalities and an ego, those on his own, an ego is only permitted to carry its meal with its claws. The gospel of peace. You don't forgive people because they deserve it. You forgive people because it's a spiritual instruction. It's a way. Unforgiveness is too heavy for a spiritual man to carry. This is why the Bible said the sun should not go down. There are people that the enemy will always accept and would be able to pray. This is why no matter how angry you are, you can't pray at that time. You can't pray. The gospel that comes in peace. You don't forgive people because they deserve it. You forgive people because you are a peacemaker. And blessed are the peace because for they shall be called the sons of God. So, how do I know you are a son of God? How do I know you are one with authority? You are a peacemaker. You are a fit and always ready with the gospel of peace. You don't wait for peace to come to you, you become the peace. So, you be so happy and say, Prophet, you are a fake man of God. I don't like you, I hate you. I take it as a testimony because I am going to that level where principalities cannot put my name in the mouth to see my job and will not be up. I will not get up. So he said for me to find you back so that I'm not going to work. This was a generous opportunity. So I won't let your offense be the road I'll carry. I don't have respect to carry this one because I'm already carrying the mandate. That's more heavier than me. The gospel. We lost connection. Just wait, please. He's going to reconnect. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is well. We are almost. We are almost done. Amen. Amen. We are almost done. Yes. The devil is a liar. The devil is a yes. liar. We are almost done. Because we're talking about principalities. <laughs> it's somebody be blessed. I hope so. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Please read verse 16. Verse 16. Remember what I'm looking at? Let's please, skip please, above, above verse all. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking, oh, the ah, shield, so taking the shield of faith with which you will be able all right. to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. Yes. Yes. Taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench on the fiery arms of the evil one. Remember it, I'm not myself. So many people are very spiritual, it's because they want to see things that come out of the before. We see, we don't see to believe. The doctor is telling you the shield of faith. By the stripes I am healed. I just know by faith that I cannot die of cancer because I saw a vision. Not because I heard a voice. It has become a. I just know, like I know that by faith I cannot die before my time. So I. 
I put on the shield of faith, it is my defense. So you say, Oh Lord, have mercy. Jesus. Oh Lord, have mercy. Ah, Shabra, have mercy. Maybe you can try disconnecting the video if it will work better. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <coughs> Thank you, Father. Yes. All right. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. <laughs> we dealt with the principality before we began the breach, the meeting. Mm -hmm. So these are just little demons. They they can't get yeah. our attention. No, just like. <laughs> Maybe can we go out and come in again? No matter the physical signs you see, no matter the symptoms you experience by faith, keep this meeting going or not? The deal is a liar, but at this point or not, we pray that we are we are almost there. We are almost there, praise the Lord. Yeah, I believe we are almost there. It's just, what is left is just for us. It's just for us to pray. Praise the Lord. So we must have a shield of faith. Because there are times that the enemy will try to intimidate you. There are times that no physical sign will be shown you. That something is moving in your life. But with the shield of faith, you must be able to defend that big stuff. You must be able to know that God is not the man that is like God. I think that God promised me, and that rain will surely come. It is not my best the way we can handle it. My responsibility is faith, and because without faith, it is impossible to see you are home, and then you are calling to the ghost, and you'll be like, oh, I'm someone who's at that same place. Say, Lord, this is not just a bank account. I am already a billionaire because we say those things that are not as they are. Ah, uh, it is well. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is well. Amen. It oh is well. Goodness. Thank you, Father. 
So from today, from today, learn how to live by faith. That is your sheep. That is your sheep. Learn how to celebrate by faith. Don't allow your circumstances to control you. Don't allow your situation to detect you. They must carry a shield of defense. By faith, God is bringing his word to come to pass. By faith, I am taking over Canada. By faith, I know. I know I can know that I'm too blessed. With you. I was defending the sheep of him, and there must be a trust of him that taught me. They understand things are going wrong. Is the highest stand you should dash. Is the highest stand you should praise God. Is the highest stand that God is doing. That's the highest stand. That's a shield of faith. Our ministry was burnt in Cameroon. And that was the highest stand. Of I think at this point, mm. all the international principalities are controlled. Because right now we are dealing with principles mm. from different villages, different nations, and different countries. So I think there is a combined force right now. <laughs> so we'll deal with that. So we are we are we are reading the last one, which is verse 7. Verse 17, and take the helmet and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18. Verse 18. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. Yes, ma'am. Please read verse 18 as well. Okay. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 17, he says, and take the helmet of salvation. Remember the work of the helmet is to protect your hair. The work of the helmet is to protect your hair. So when you start to confront principalities, you must put the helmet of salvation. You must make sure you are safe first. The salvation of your soul is what will protect your head. And your head is your symbol of authority, is your symbol of glory. So you don't go to battle with a Jesus you do not know. Mm. Because it's only they that know their God that shall be strong. That's right. You must put up. The hell must be saved. That is what protects your head from being cut off in battle. They that know their God shall be strong. So you don't just come and want to confront things in the name of Jesus. When you and the things praying always, not on certain occasions, but always with the prayer of supplication in the spirit. 
It is easier for you to overcome spirits when you pray. It is very easy for you to take over spiritual frequencies when you know how to pray in the spirit. Learn how to pray in the spirit. So I wake up every day and lifting up my hands in war. La res kofa palate, rabia kofa rusu fratawa, i kwata, i kepe, rasu prati palata. Do you know all manner of prayer in the spirit? All manner of supplications, taking more fatalities in the spirit. Learn how to pray always. This is what the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 13. He said, if any, if any man is if any man is in trouble, let him pray. So whether you are worried or not, it is a time for prayer. So when there is something to celebrate, it is time to pray. When there is something to think about, it is time to pray. When there is a worry in your heart, it is time to pray, especially in the spirit. Because there are some buttons, if you don't know how to pray in the spirit, you will only pray in your understanding. I remember what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. He said, Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. But always acknowledge him. Because there are some battles that I don't need that I clap my hands. There are some battles if I am confronting. A wall of terrible, then I must learn how to shout hallelujah. I must learn how to go around the wall first before I shout. If your principality is a wall of terrible, it doesn't go by you fasting and prayer. It goes by you going around the wall six times for six days. And then on the Sunday, what does that mean? When they went round the, the wall of Jericho for six days, this is the number of man. There are things that for God to carry you rest on the seventh day. You can't go to God and accept the car when you have not gone around that wall. You have to learn the, 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 the court and the street laws. You have to when you rest in that area by blessing with the car. You can't be praying to God for marriage if you are if, if, if your problem is marriage, you must go around that wall of Jericho. You must study, read books on marriage, attend marital conferences, have knowledge of marriage. How do I control this? How do I take this? But then you will now talk to God and ask Him to give you rest by blessing you with the marriage. So you are praying for marriage, and the marriage is not coming because you have not become familiar with Jericho, and then God. Will help you bring it down by praise. Praise is a weapon. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, at midnight, at midnight, Paul and Silas began to praise God. Midnight, the scripture does not just mean midnight as the time of the night, because it can be midnight in the Victoria Guinea and it's 4 p.m. in America. Midnight is that situation in your life, that time in your life where everywhere is dark. You are looking left and right and you don't know what is happening. It seems as if everything is against you. Nothing, the day is not breaking, no breakthrough, nothing. That is the highest time you lose praise. That's a weapon. That's the highest time you begin to praise God. When you have reached that point in your life where you don't understand, because the truth is that at that time you can't even pray. Because your spirit is weak, discouraged, but that is the time you need to begin to praise. That is the time you need to use the word of prayer. That's the hardest time to dance for God. Because when you have reached a point where you don't know what to do, to vote the one that you want to do. In praying in the spirit, always a kefaru so far. I told you on Saturday, I have a 12 hour prayer. Strictly praying in the spirit. The whole church, even some people pray to the level. Where they will just go and stand one corner and, and all they're saying is God, why? God, why? 
They, all, all their prayer, all their prayer stopped. Because they were praying when they are understanding. And somebody woke up to me and be like, Papa, God spoke to me and said, He has answered us. I said, Okay, you are the one God spoke to, but I'm the shepherd, I'm the commander of this of this particular ship. So now the prayer should be that God should speak to me. <laughs> so when I was praying, God, please talk to Papa. We are tired. Father, talk to your servant. <laughs> talk to your servant. Because we don't understand. Praying in the spirit always. You must learn to be a man of prayer. Because prayer doesn't change things, but prayer changes you. It changes you. It is your faith that changes things. Prayer doesn't change things, but prayer changes you. So you go into a place of prayer and go to a spiritual metamorphosis. You went like an ordinary man, broken and discouraged. But as you began to pray, as you began to worship, there is an energy that has provoked in the spirit realm. This is why I can pray for 72 hours without knowing it's already 72 hours. Kaya, brother. Kai. I can pray for, for 100 hours without knowing it is 100 hours. Because I'm praying in the spirit and I know the importance. So, for example, if I start praying, uh, let's say I'm dealing with my family, and I start praying, Father, every power in my family will be cast by. I do not know where the power is coming from. But the moment I switch to the spirit, it's like, it's like uh, somebody from Germany comes and is speaking German to me, I wouldn't understand. Even if the person is telling me I want to bless you in German, I wouldn't understand. But if the person speaks English, I will understand. So spirit will know me more when I pray in the spirit. But if I just went on when I began to pray for my family, la la sepekia para sofa, ite parus kofa I am speaking mysteries. I am identifying some things. I am handling things. That's why God said, "I pray in the spirit and I pray in my understanding. I see in the spirit and I see in my understanding." So everyone here that does have the baptism of fire, the baptism of God, you will receive it today in the name of Jesus. I know yes. I have exalted my time, but we are going to deal with that principality now. Yes. Why did the principality resist the sons of Skeba? Because the sons of Skeba were not under Paul. If they were under the grace of Paul, they will have been covered. Mm. But they were under their father. And their father would, did not have that spiritual authority. Their father did not have that ability. Their father was a priest, but he was not given that authority to deal with principalities. So there are some demons that will bow. There are some, some, some forces that will bow, not because of you as a person, but because of a covering that is leading you at that particular time. That is why you must be careful where you put your head. Because if you put your head under a man that doesn't have the ability to deal with principalities, you will fight his battles and you will kill your own vision. Okay. So the disciples of Paul could walk in those dimensions, but the disciples of Skeva wanted to imitate, but they were not part of that spiritual image. That spiritual DNA was not in there. So if I fast 248 days to enter some realms, you don't need to fast 248 days to enter those realms because the road has already been done. You just need a ticket to go through that, that particular road. Okay. But if you said, I want to turn my own road from Douala to Yahweh, I want to turn my own road, I don't want to use the one that is now. You may never reach, even if they give you 200 years, because before you touch a place, somebody will show up and say, this is my land, this is my property. So you may never, all you need to do is if you have a personal car, then you need fuel. If you have a car without fuel, you don't go. If you don't have a car, look for an agency and pay a ticket and they will carry you from Ghana to London. It's the same thing in the spirit. Before you deal with some principalities and deal with some, you must first of all have the knowledge of your identity in Christ and know the coffee. You don't carry a sergeant to go and fight a general. The disciples of Jesus saw with all the impartation they had, they couldn't cast a particular thing. 
And when Jesus returned from this side, the demons cleaned. And the father went to Jesus and said, your disciples couldn't cast out this particular spirit. Because this spirit throws my son into the water and into the fire. So the only person that can cast that kind of demon is one that has had an encounter with water and fire. Okay. That has dealt with water and fire. And so Jesus is coming down to the mountain of transfiguration where he made Moses water and he made Elijah fire. So he received the mantle to, to deal with water spirit and the mantle to deal with fire. And then he made the spirit that throws the sun into water and fire. And they can easily go because the one that is addressing them has already encountered that way. The disciples couldn't cast because they have not seen Elijah. They have not seen God. So Moses was a prophet that called down fire. Uh, sorry, Elijah was a prophet that called down fire. Moses was a prophet. The name Moses means act of water. That's why he could part the Red Sea. So there are some realms until you encounter, you will know how to deal with some things. We are going to address that principality in your life today. Who is he that will say a thing and it shall come to pass in your life when the Lord God has not spoken? We are going to pray and we are going to address principalities. The one standing against your business, your marriage, you are telling whatever principality it is. We are addressing them in prayer. And we pray continuously for 10 minutes, non stop. Pray with all your might. Let your attention, your mind, your soul be on what you are addressing. And know that this time you are not just addressing as an individual. No, Prophet Chris is here. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, Prophet Chris is here. When I say Prophet Chris is here, it is because that name in the spirit, principalities must know who Prophet Chris is. Because if they know who Paul is, they must know who Chris is. And then we mm. with Jesus in mm. So that name becomes important because this man has dealt with some things. Mm -hmm. So we are praying in the name of Jesus today. God, breaking chains and declaring. The Bible says, can't make that strong matter and take us something without breaking the strong man. So now we are not just praying for your marriage or your business or your ministry. We are addressing the principality that is.